well, well, we have returned. We have a plethora of interesting topics for today. We're actually going to start off not talking about Mark Zaid. We will get to him, don't go, don't worry, because Mark Zaid is a brick too. But we're going to be talking about the alt-right attempting to hijack Generation Z. We'll be talking about Adam Schiff still pulling some schemes and scams when it comes to the impeachment inquiry. It's going to be an interesting show, but we're happy to be here. And Hatman looks like he just stepped off the cast of Letterkenny. My name is Micah Curtis. <laughs> Hatman Alex Baldwin, back from Boston. <laughs> Welcome back to Mike and the Hatman, everyone. All right, let's go ahead and get rolling. First off, let's say hi to a few people that are in the chat. It's a, uh, and I think Autis Whisper starts us off with a really, really good statement right out of the gate. Um, the alt right have no institutional power, so I'm not worried. And that is something that we're going to emphasize here. They have literally nothing, but they're trying to get something, and that's what we're going to talk about. So there has been an interesting thing going on. There is an op going on behind the scenes. For those who don't know, uh, Nick Fuentes is the figurehead that the alt-right is now currently using, and they actually started this op on 4chan of all places. Hatman, um, you actually dug that up, correct? I did, yep. I found it. And what so, what, what basically um, ended up coming around on this one? What, 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 what was the plan? Okay, so the plan, um, Operation Groiper General, um, I believe it was posted before this, but the the uh, thread that I found is dated as uh, Halloween of this year. Um, the plan was attend popular right wing events, and I'm quoting verbatim here. Uh, prepare some coherent red pilled questions in advance. Do not pre-canned, ask questions about. These are well, one thing that I need to add there. They're all pre canned, and yes, this mm-hmm. did come from poll. Yep. Um, do not ask questions about the JQ this early in the operation, the JQ being the Jewish question, of course. Be subtle about it. Perhaps make some dancing Israeli placards or something. When asked about it, just play it cool and say something, something to the effect of, I'm just fond of the horror. I thought Ben would acknowledge my appreciation for Jewish culture. You should look into it. It's really interesting stuff or something. Rather, question them on birth rates, Christian culture, 3.8 billion aid to Israel, race and IQ, but most importantly, demographic change and its impact on Americans. Be calm, cool, and collected throughout these events. You don't want to make the movement lose credibility. Yep. So they are fully aware, folks, of their own views. Mm -hmm. And they say them in that post. And like we said, Fuentes is is the face of it. You know, they're using this 21-year-old know-nothing to try to legitimize themselves as this, um, their, 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 their description of him is pre-canned too. He's 21 years old. He's so smart. He's a genius. Da-da-da-da-da. He's an idiot. Largely has no clue what he's talking about and knows that he has no clue what he's talking about. On top of that, complete and total Holocaust denier as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Now... This has not worked out that well for them. Charlie Kirk is basically banning them from his events, uh, which I don't think is the smartest move. I think that Charlie Kirk is smart enough to try to that, or he's he's smart enough to be able to, you know, meet them head on in regards to the battle of ideas and call them yeah. out on their own nonsense. You know, I think that that shows a lack of confidence in Charlie in Charlie Kirk. On the flip side, um, Ben Shapiro did a speech for the Young America Foundation, where he basically called out everything that they were doing, likely because he had somebody digging into them. And he probably found that exact same 4chan post that Hatman found too. And as such, they completely called out everything that they were going to do before they could even do it. Even answering the pre-canned questions that they're asking, like, like, how does anal sex help win the culture war? Which is one of the dumbest questions I've ever heard. Um, You know, because it's a Kafka trap. Mm-hmm. And a lot of their other questions are Kafka traps, too. And when it comes right down to it, they never really had a response to it. None of them got in line to ask questions to Ben Shapiro, despite that there were some of them there. And beyond that, 
Shapiro has this thing of, raise your hand if you disagree with me, come to the front. They could have easily asked anything. And they uh -huh. didn't. They chose not to. Instead, because he called them out, in my opinion, they just shouted from the back. Now, here's the fact. Here's here's the the facts about this. It is the alt right. They will yeah. try to say they're not. They will try to say they're Christians. They don't hold any Christian beliefs at all. They try to say that the Bible argues for ethno states. They try to say that the argue, the Bible argues for theocracies. It does neither. God, Jesus was not interested in government. Hello. That was a... Uh, hey. Oh, free stuff. Cool. <laughs> Ant-Man's apparently getting free things. But anyway, these are exactly the same kind of people that were at Charlottesville. They're trying to rebrand. They're trying to rebrand because of exactly what happened at that particular point. You know, one thing that I thought was very telling was the Richard Spencer leaked audio. And some of you might have heard it because Milo Yiannopoulos actually leaked it. Because, obviously, Milo's not a fan of this sort of shit either. But the audio got leaked, and basically, Richard Spencer exposed himself in that way of basically being a wannabe tyrant. So, let me say this. Um, I, I listened to Sargon of Akkad's video on this. And one thing that I disagree with him on something, he says that there's questions that need to be answered about the origins of the ideas and which where they came from, and he tried to link them straight to, straight to Britain. Well, Britain is where John Locke is from, yes, and he is probably one of the major philosophers that we pull from in the Constitution. But Locke and his studies came from the Greeks and from the Catholics. Martin Luther, the Reformation, things along those mm -hmm. lines. Where did their ideas come from? From Israel. There is a chain of succession of ideas. It's mm -hmm. not just one particular nationality that comes up with this sort of thing. And even then, there are some ideas that are shared by certain people groups here in the United States and others that are not. One thing you'll find is that there, there is no shortage of religiosity among white people or among minorities. In fact, mm -hmm. by, per capita, if I recall correctly, minorities are more religious. There are probably more, uh, well, most Latinos are Catholics. Yes, know? very, very yes. So, and, and it's the white folks who are moving away from the church. So, and did the constitution also derive ideas from the Greeks, mostly from Cicero? Yes, that is true. Yep. And that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the thing that um, these, these guys will not admit. They'll try to say these are white ideas. Which definition of white are we asking here? Are we, is it yeah, modern seriously. day? Is it 1977? You know, or, or I'm sorry, 1777? Is it 16, um, 1640? Like, which, which definition? Because at one point, the Slavs weren't considered white. You know, mm -hmm. at one point, the Scandinavians weren't even considered white, which are the palest motherfuckers out there. Yeah. There is no consistency. And at the end of the day, one thing that I would just encourage from those of you, because we have a lot of Zoomers who are fans of us and our yeah. comics and everything like that. One thing I would encourage you guys, tell them to fuck off. Tell them to shut the fuck up and call them the idiots they are. Do not be scared of these people at all. Yeah. Because they cannot hijack <clears throat> your generation if you do not let them. Yeah. They will be and can, will continue to be exposed. They're not Christians. They're not. They're not conservatives. They no. are fascists. Yeah. They believe in fascistic ideas. They want giant government. They want mass deportation of anybody who is not white. It's the same stuff that Richard Spencer was doing, but in a in an attempt to put it within the skin of Christianity. Yeah. Notice how none of them it, ever talk about Jesus. They they want. They want the conservative movement to be statist, authoritarian, like big time Catholic. Because notice that very few Protestants calling for this, um, essentialist and nationalist. Yeah, that is no. That is very, very no. That rejects pretty much all of the Enlightenment ideas of how government should work. 
That is no. Yep. Let's. Uh, they want a theocracy, and we will not have that shit. I, will, I won't even say they want a theocracy. I think they want a faux theocracy. I think they want to try to mm-hmm. use Catholicism to, to try to argue for their own points, but the problem is that Catholicism doesn't argue for that. Right. It's, it's nonsense. But this is something that even the Bible predicts. There will people who be people who dress themselves with the cross that are not Christians. Mm-hmm. These are they. Yeah. They're here right now. Be wary of the ones who speak loudly. Yes. Uh, Autist Whisper says, speaking of Richard Spencer, did you see that audio leak of him having a breakdown? Yes. Mm-hmm. And he spoke exactly what they're all thinking. Yeah. They think that they should be ruling the world. That's it. They are tyrants. Every single one of them. All right, let's go ahead. God, 10, 10 minutes went by pretty quickly. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the next bit. So, Jeffrey Epstein, we're back here again. <sighs> this fucker. Yeah. The, um... Real quick, um, Cooper's Revenge Home asks, why didn't you make a video mocking him then? Richard Spencer? He's not worth my attention. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, Richard Spencer is just a... He's nobody. He, like, he's, he mocks he's himself. Yeah. He mocks himself. Why, what What more can, can we add to it? Yeah. He's done. They're, they'll yeah. all be done within a couple of years. Yeah. They're not winning any war of ideas. It's 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 funnier that that he's getting paid by CNN. <laughs> that's, that's the funniest thing of all this. Yes. Well, and that's the thing. These people, the the alt right are tools of the left, and they yeah. don't even they're too stu- they're too stupid to realize it. They're yeah. going to continue to be platformed, and they're going to continue to be put out there, up until the point that they ban them, and then they put conservatives in a rough spot mm-hmm. because we have to defend free speech. Yeah. You know, notice they're, that they're small but loud. Notice that they're, Nick they're, Fuentes, they're like chihuahuas, they're fucking like, chihuahuas. Well, yeah, but pretty much. But here's the thing: <laughs> think think about this for a second. And I made this point to YouTube, and they will not answer me on this. I asked them quite simply: Why do my live streams not show up in people's recommendations, but Nick Fuentes's does when he has openly defied the hol- or denied the Holocaust? They will not answer that question. I've asked them several times, and I'm going to continue to do so. I want to get an answer out of YouTube. I'm going to at some point. But anyway, let's move on to this because Epstein thing. Because people send in super chats. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so Epstein, we, we had an interesting thing where Project Veritas managed to get some information, and somebody blew the whistle on ABC, where one of their correspondents uh-huh. had basically said, I had the Epstein story three or four years ago. The whole thing. And yep, photos and, and testimony, everything. And ABC shuttered the story. Mm-hmm. Because, allegedly, they were afraid that they would not get interviews with uh, William and Kate. Because Buckingham Palace got really pissy about the information that was being received. Yeah. This was probably one of the most egregious things that the news media has done. Oh, no. It gets worse. Continue. The alleged leaker, um, who now works or worked for CBS, uh, got fired. ABC contacted CBS, had them fire the leaker. And then Project Veritas came out and said that that wasn't even the, the right person. You got the wrong person. What in the literal fuck? Yeah. I got nothing. This I got nothing. This is a, another big exposure of the media mm-hmm. as a whole. The media as a whole, is no longer about the news. They haven't been about the news for some time. What they are about is being the government wing of the media. Or rather, the the DNC media. That's it. That's all they're interested in. 
that and profit. They want they want money. Trust yeah. me. As, as someone who has worked, even if it's local media, still media, very very profit driven. Yep. Got to get them clicks. Got to get them views. Got to get them social media shares. Yep. That's what matters. And so we find ourselves with this sort of a situation where this could have been exposed years ago. Jeffrey Epstein could have been arrested years ago, and he was not. Well, he could have he could have been imprisoned. I mean, he was arrested and he had this trial and which is bullshit. But that that could have put a whole lot of social pressure. We could have basically had the kind of pressure of me too on this this fucker years ago. And many more victims could have been saved earlier. In addition to, you know, other girls because remember Girls, not women, girls. Yeah. They would not be victimized by him. Yeah. Uh, Servant of God donates a dollar, says there's more problems for them. Disney, which owns ABC, had their little cruise line stop at Little St. James Island for snorkeling, of all things. Yeah, there's there's a lot of levels to this particular controversy that are um, that are going to cause you know a lot of problems for the media for good reason. But yeah, you, you, you think about all the people who, who have become victims because the media did not do its job. You know, and this is something that I, that I find really interesting is they, they constantly say that they speak truth to power, right? Like that's what um, Gawker Media's union has been trying to say that, that oh, we speak truth to power. We, that's why we're so important. We speak truth to power. Where, where was the media for this? <laughs> Covering it up. Mm-hmm. How many more things do they cover up per day is the question. This is why new media is so important. These sorts of situations are exactly why Andrew Breitbart started Breitbart.com and why so many people who used to write for Breitbart have now gone on to start their own media organizations basically to combat the left. Mm -hmm. It's information warfare. That's where we're at. dare, Dare I call it info war. (laughs) <laughs> uh, let's not go there no but, let's not not quite yeah we're talking about real shit here yeah not, not yeah. gay frogs yeah not hillary clinton being a goddamn demon yeah <laughs> but this this is it, it's it's incredibly disturbing to me like why why on earth would you even consider not sharing this kind of a story and beyond that it's like i think to myself of how big of a story it would be because it was big this year, I can't. Mm-hmm. Re- I have no reason to assume it wouldn't have been big two years ago yeah. or three years ago. Yeah. yeah, I mean that that fucking excuse of, oh well, who's Epstein? Nobody knows who this guy is. Uh, clearly, someone knows who he is. If, if if he's out with these ridiculously powerful fucking people, clearly he is known. Maybe not to the general public, but he damn well would be. Yeah, I mean fucking, and and that's that's what I don't fucking get. Nobody knew who the hell George Zimmerman was before he shot Trayvon Martin. And now most fucking people in America do. They know who he is. The media can blow somebody's name up and make them a fucking household name overnight. Yep. They have the power to do that. They chose not to. And that makes them fucking complicit in this. They enabled this goddamn monster. And now, because the story is basically dead of him killing himself they're they're still enabling all the fucking people that were connected to him what about his fucking partner whose name i cannot fucking pronounce for for my entire life where the hell did she disappear to where's she at she's still out there somewhere his empire did not just suddenly crumble because he was assassinated there's still something out there. They can be doing shit. They're just not. They're protecting people. They're complicit in this. A little mini rant over. <laughs> well, it's it was a rant that needed it to happen because this is something that just, again, it shows you where the media is at. Mm-hmm. They are more interested in burying the bodies than pointing us to where they're at. Mm-hmm.
All right. Let's move on. Hatman, tell us about how scummy Adam Schiff is being. Adam Schiff is ridiculously scummy. He's basically trying to... <laughs> He's trying to weave this impeachment narrative in a way that benefits not only the Democrats, but retroactively makes him correct. All this, I have information that can lead to the impeachment of Donald Trump. And he's, he's trying to bring in all these fucking witnesses that have barely anything to do with the Ukraine call, the, ne the now infamous Ukraine call, for like a full impeachment hearing. And now we're, we're hearing that the articles of impeachment are going to go beyond the, the scope of this one call. It's going, it's going to have other things that he's done in office. So they're going to bring back fucking Russiagate and shit, too. And the GOP has asked that Hunter Biden testify at the public impeachment hearings, and Schiff just shot it down. Oops! Oops! <laughs> absolutely, absolutely fucking ridiculous. Keep in mind, too, that when... Um, when the Megazi hearings were happening, he went nuts trying to get all these irrelevant fucking people inserted into it and said it was a sham because he couldn't fucking have that happen. Hypocrite, maybe? <laughs> yeah. Th fuck this guy, man. Seriously. Shifty shift. Yeah. So, fuck him? Fuck him. I still don't know what they think they're going to get out of this whole impeachment thing. They're, they're not going to... Some people have said um, because the trial is going to be in the, in the Senate, which is Republican-controlled, the GOP can uh, bring some people out uh, in regards to like the, the FISA warrants and whatnot and have them testify and basically nail the Democrats to the wall for it. I don't think that's going to fucking... That, that's more this... 4D chess thing, which I don't think is going to is gonna fucking happen. It's basically just... It's a ploy by the Democrats to smear Trump's name enough to make him harder to elect in 2020. This is how they, they capture the votes of the independents. They, they turn them into a vote against Trump as opposed to a vote for the Democrats. It's, it's a bullshit strategy, and it's going to blow up in their fucking face. Especially because now more people are waking up to this uh, this level of due process that's happening. Because it, it, it doesn't fucking exist. I mean, you have closed-door testimony from people. You release transcripts, but keep some stuff behind closed doors because what the fuck ever. And then now... What, next week, I think? Two weeks from now? We're getting uh, public testimony? Finally? I mean, you may as well just take us to the fucking trial at this point. But again, because the GOP controls the Senate, then they get to control, you know, who testifies. Yep. It is a giant, stupid sideshow. It's not going to take them anywhere. You know it what? It really is. I have an idea. I think we've kind of said all we need to say on this one. There's one more thing. There's one more thing. Real quick. Um, Nikki Haley got into it and said that the, the whole process is bullshit because it's all over a call that everybody acknowledged, you know, may or may not have been, according to this transcript, about money that was ultimately given for a alleged favor that wasn't carried out to intimidate someone who said he wasn't fucking intimidated. She's like, what the fuck are they, impe or are they trying to impeach him for? And she's absolutely fucking right. I mean, this is a power play. It's a fucking power play. Respect to Nikki Haley. We, we, we love that woman. Indeed. Now... 
But because so much of this shit is depressing, I, I have a backup plan. Is it good news? It is good news. I like good news. Good news, everyone. Yes. So, in fact, we are even going to let you all see puppies because puppies are great and everybody loves dogs. But yes. we have good news. And I think that, and this is also going to answer a question from um, Austin Hat from the from the uh, from the pol- uh, pol- politics part of the Discord server a little bit earlier. So Austin, I hope you're listening because he asks, "What are your thoughts on the Doomer mentality?" I think the Doomer mentality is fucking bullshit. And there are a bunch that if you uh, don't think that you can make a difference in the world around you, you haven't been fucking trying. And you could be doing good things, but you choose not to. fact of the matter is we find ourselves in such a rough place when it comes to our communities and our closeness because we will not take the time to go out there and do things that make a difference in our own world on the micro because everybody thinks that they need to save the world sometimes all you have to do is save a dog's life so Mm -hmm. in a story from ash scow from over the daily wire she says texas woman wins award after reducing an animal kill shelter rate from a hundred percent to zero. Zero. One person did this. Not all heroes wear capes. Kayla Denny took over in the animal shelter in Taft, Texas last November. At the time, the shelter was in disrepair and failing to find homes for its animals, leading to a 100% kill rate. In the year since Denny took over, that rate has dropped to zero percent, with 565 dogs and cats finding homes. That's more than one per day. Thanks to her unsung changes, Denny has been awarded Petco's 2019 National Unsung Hero Award. There are thousands of applicants. I didn't even know I was nominated, Denny told told KZTV. I became the 219 unsung hero for the country, so one person in the whole United States. And it still blows my mind that that's still a thing. Denny's work in Taft quickly gained attention because just four months into the job, she was among the top five contenders for the Petco Award. For that, she was awarded $10,000. After winning first place, she will be awarded an additional twenty-five grand. Denny told, told KZTV that the money will be reinvested into the animal shelter. It's an older shelter and run down. We got lights thanks to a donor who put in electricity for us, but I want indoor-outdoor kennels with a guillotine in between so that when it's raining, we can put them inside. Just to clarify, Denny was referring to a type of door that raises and lowers when an animal enters their exit. It's not an actual guillotine. <laughs> she also talked about her plans for the future of the shelter. We want an area where they can meet and greet out in the field and somewhere they can have grass time rather than just cement time. While she's been working to save the lives of hundreds of animals, Congress has been working to make animal cruelty a federal crime, da 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 Point is, this sort of thing is why the Doomer mentality is largely bullshit. There are things that you can be doing to improve the lives of people around you that are not being done and a lot of these people choose to not do it here's my question to all of those out there who are the black pill types how much time do you spend watching these bullshit nihilist black pill videos when you could be out doing something else how much time how much time do you fill your heads with that kind of nonsense when you could be doing something else and here's the thing you do not have to be fucking Superman or Batman or something like that to make a difference in people's lives. Don't aim for 20,000. Aim for one and start there. Because it is worth it. Because good things can happen if you are willing to put good into the world around you. And the reason I know that is because I was like you at one point. And I was fucking wrong. Little things, little conversations. One kind word can warm three winter months. It's an old Japanese proverb. And it's very true. That's all that it takes. Listening to people when they're hurting. Giving advice. Helping them find something. Saving lives of pets. Things like that. These are things you could be doing. That not only help other people, but they will help the sanctity of your soul. Which is what is the, that's the part of you that's hurting. That's the part of you that wants to think that the world around you is doomed. It's not. Get up. Do something with yourself. And the things that you put into this world, and the things that you work towards, and the things that you do to improve other people's lives, 
it will it will start a chain effect and someday we can maybe get back to where we were years ago but we have to take the initiative to rebuild these communities ourselves because nobody's going to do it for us don't rely on the government to do it don't rely on this other guy make the decision yourself ask yourself this question can i take four hours to go help someone can i take three can i take two can i take one what can i do okay maybe i don't have that much spare time my job asks a lot of me do i have extra money that i could be helping to donate to places like this so the people who can do it can do it much easier and can have a greater effect these are the questions you should be asking yourselves because the more you sit around and woe is me the less time it is that you could be fixing the problems all you got to do is make a decision man get up and do it because that's what this lady did and, and imagine how many lives were bettered just because they were able to have a pet in the household and those animals are a place where they can be loved instead of just waiting in a shelter all day waiting to die clean your room bucko <laughs> <laughs> but no it's that that is how it goes and this is why i wanted to bring back good news this week because we need more good news we do all right final topic we're gonna laugh at mark zade because mark zade is a prick do we have to make those shirts too <laughs> mm, nah because the last ones didn't really sell that well not to mention it's not something people want to wear in public but yeah, that's, but, that, that is true. But Mark Zaid is indeed a prick. And we've known Mark that Zaid he was a prick. prick. Yeah, we, we knew for a while that he was a prick. Because, of course, the, the the attacks on Comicsgate that he made. Calling us Nazis and all this other shit. Now, obviously, it was bullshit and we could see right through him. But he he did it nonetheless to try to make it get some sort of attention on us. And try to make his client, Mark Wade, look better. Well, newsflash, asshole, you failed. But it's even worse. The fact is, or the thing is, he is the w lawyer for the supposed whistleblower against Donald Trump. The whistleblower mm -hmm. that actually ended up being just a Democratic fucking operative. <clears throat> and this guy is somebody who suffers from tr uh, Trump derangement syndrome. And he has wanted there to be an impeachment proceeding on Donald Trump for the longest time. So guess what our president did? He dug out those tweets and read them in front of a packed house, I think in Texas, wasn't it? I think so. Or I think so. Is and, it Texas or Mississippi or Alabama? Yeah, or it was somewhere down in the south. But... He basically <laughs> called him a scumbag in front of thousands of people. And then Zayd was all over Twitter with people calling him a scumbag. Folks, I want you to keep this in mind. Donald Trump is comic skate. Pretty much. Yeah. That was also, Mark Zayd is a prick. Yes. And he's a celebrity lawyer at this point. Like, let's let's be fucking real. He's a wannabe celebrity lawyer. He wants to uh, he wants to fill the gap left behind by, oh fuck, what's his name? The guy, the the wife beater. Avenatti. Yeah, that one. Fuck him too. Yeah. Creepy so, porn lawyer 2.0. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's trying to be. He's, he's creepy Wade lawyer. He's he's uh. Damn, what did he get what did he got, get caught looking up? Was it He was watching was it, videos about like Disney Prince like uh Disney um like Disney Channel girls from like childhood to adulthood. Which were really He's really, creepy. Really he's creepy Epstein lawyer. Yeah, he's this dude is like really really creepy. Yeah. And he got caught looking up tentacle porn. That was um. No, that's that was another dude. That's um. Uh, the guy who actually um got in touch with your boy. Um, 
Yeah. Who tried to do? Who tried to destroy Tucker Carlson and really badly yeah. failed? Fuck. I forget what his fucking name was too. I don't Kurt know. Schlichter? No, it's not Kurt Schlichter. No, uh, Eichenwald. Yeah, Kurt Eichenwald. Eichenwald. Eckywald. <laughs> Eckywald, yeah. whatever. However the fuck you print. Whatever. Anyway. Um, so, so, uh, what's this about YouTube banning banning people for, for talking about the name of the whistleblower? I don't know anything about that. But, Let's... but Zay did actually <laughs> throw out a threat to people saying that um <laughs> but, machine um, learned that fuck oaks <laughs> but he actually said like threatened the press the right wing press saying um that they, that he would sue whoever reveals the name and it's like no you actually can't do that then he um sent a <laughs> cease and de- he sent a cease and desist to the president sue me fucking sue me But he said to cease and desist to the fucking president. And he thought that was going to work out. Like, of course, the president fucking ignored it. <laughs> this guy is... Like, he... I legitimately think he is dumber than Michael Avenatti. I, I, I think he is considerably dumber than Michael Avenatti. Are we in agreement on that one or no? Yeah, I would I would have to say so. Cuz Avenatti, man, he just He could at least play the game. Zade can't even play the game. He just cannot keep his mouth shut. So Yeah. <sighs> hmm. What can we do for this prick? Um. Huh. Good question. What button do we hit? We don't have any new buttons, do we? We don't. Damn. Need to ask Santa to give us new buttons. Hmm. Good old fashioned fuck him? Hmm. Yeah, let's do it. Fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck him. All right. I think that we've we've kind of. We need a road roller button, apparently. <laughs> oh, that would be so cool. I will I will have to think about or see about doing that. All right, let's go ahead then and hit the Q and A. Hit it with a crowbar. So again, just um, we'll go with the patrons Discord first, and remember, folks, to join the Discord channel, it only costs one dollar. Or if you become a member of the main channel, I'll throw you in there as well. Um, just let me know that you've become a member and email me, and then I will go ahead and get you access. So, but yeah. Um, but Austin, if you're watching this again, I don't know if you're watching it now, um, I answered the question that you asked um, during the whole good news segment. So that's that's basically my answer to that. Um, Waistcoats wants to know for the political podcast, thoughts on Kanye denounce or denouncing or announcing that he's running for president of 2024 my friend um group is a little concerned he's going to give christians a bad name or lead people astray good intentions or not i don't think he's going to go through with it um no nah. he he talked about it years ago that he was going to run for president like in 2020 or something yeah but um nah. yeah she didn't announce it. It. but but i don't um no i don't think he'll go through with it and I'm I'm interested to see where he goes because he apparently does have a bunch of pastors around him now that are mm. trying to help him through this, and he he try he apparently tries not to say anything that he doesn't know anything about, which I think is good, because that's one thing that a lot of young Christians don't get, is that they don't know squat. 
and they get a ton of like righteous indignation and they want to go change the world and then from there they just don't um they fail and then they get mad and then they blame it on god but instead you know what what young christians should do is be humble and be honest and say they're new here and listen and listen and then listen some more So, I think that... I'm happy that Kanye has become a Christian. Mm-hmm. I'm very happy. Um, I think that he is entering a phase of his life where he's going to understand that it's not easy to be a Christian. But I think that given his attitude and given how strong-willed he is, I think that that could end up being a, a great boon to him in his faith. Because he'll want to learn more about Jesus. He'll want to understand more about it. And I think that the album Jesus is King could be a big cultural shift for the nation. Especially to young black people. Who are starting to realize that the answers that the media and the answers that the politicians have tried to give them are bullshit. That and at the end of the day, we all have... A commonality that God has given us is that we are all human and made in his image. And hopefully more people will begin to start seeing what Jesus can do for your life and start under, you know, start going towards towards immigrant again, you know. So that that's my thoughts on that. All right, one thing that um, we would just remind people is be careful not to, to spam questions too much in the chat. Um, yeah, we're we, gonna start uh, we'll talk into, about this. Yeah, we'll talk we'll about talk that more in entertainment. It. We'll just say we've been here. Yeah. There's been some stuff about bannings because of spam lately, so be careful. Yeah. Um, you know, we are going to read the chat. Hatman and I both have our eyes on it along with the mods, so yep. we're, we're here for you, so don't worry about that. Um, and of course, guys, if you donate money, we will, of course, read the question quicker. Um, we kind of are in need of it, um, I'm, again, going through financial issues, and my health is, has actually gotten worse lately. So anything you can contribute would be of a big help to me. Um, another thing, if you please would, if you are watching this right now, there's 67 people watching. I need every single one of you to stop and hit that like button. Just smash it. And for every podcast or every video, smash that fucker. Because part of the reason Wait, that YouTube... <laughs> yeah. Part of the reason that YouTube has been shafting us on on people coming in is because of lack of engagement. If we can get those engagement numbers up or anything like that, like more, more comments, more likes, things like that, we can continue to grow this community, which, you know, has always been my goal because I think that we have the ability to show people that, you know, the Internet is not this terrible place that people just treat each other like dog shit all day. You know, mm-hmm. there can be good things here. So... All right. Uh, Leonardo Juan asks, thoughts on the Epstein case getting memed? I think it's funny. It is. And it's true. On top of that, because he didn't kill himself. Yeah. I'm, I'm beginning to think he didn't either. I don't know for sure, I'm, but then again, I don't know a lot. I'm fairly certain. With, with, there's way too many coincidences for, for, that, for that to just be, you know, he, he, he offed himself. He was, he was assassinated. There's no way. There's no way he wasn't. But Let's what else see. we got here? Um, a Koopa's Revenge Homes question. Is that more for entertainment? Um. Yeah, if you could, Koopa, save that for entertainment. I, I think we should do it there. Yeah, I like the question. It's just, I think oh, it's a very good question. For it. Very good yeah. one. Um, Hardboiled asks, um, what do you think the end results of the Veritas expose of ABC's cover-up will be, in particular the anchor noting we had Clinton? Um, well, I think that, that they are going to likely um, lose more credibility than, they've, than they had already lost. Yeah. I mean, that's huge to admit. Yeah. Someone in the chat noted earlier that, um, you know, when they had this story, uh, Hillary was running, and it could have uh, hurt her chances. And... Yeah, that, that could have been something, too. You, I mean, the Clinton campaign could have come out and, and said, hey, don't run this story. But we didn't hear anything about that. So 
I don't know. I mean, either way, ABC is fucked. And more so that they actually conspired to have the alleged whistleblower slash leaker fired from another fucking company. Like, that's... You don't do that. It's fucked. All right, what else we got? Um, I like this one. It's a little ways up. Um, here we go. How is it that the alt-right can bash communism as Jewish thought, yet still want to seize the means of production a la communism? Because they're not very smart people. No, they're not. We talked about this a couple weeks back with Razor Fist's video about um, national socialists being socialists. Yeah. That it kind of it kind of falls into into that category there. Yeah. Um, Tom the Fish asks opinions on Bloomberg thinking of stepping into the DNC snafu. I think if he does, it's going to be really interesting to see the Democrats who have been so progressive all of a sudden defending a billionaire. I think I think it says something about the state of the Democratic Party. That Bloomberg is so incest by the candidates running right now that he feels like he has to step in. I mean, that's pretty that's pretty fucked when you think about it. I, I still think that there's Michael a possibility Bloomberg. that Hillary could step back in too. I mean, the the fact of the matter is the field sucks oh, God, for does. them. If the, she the, does, the, the field is really bad because that none of them have any ideas that are, you know, salient. And nobody likes them. Nobody likes the progressive ideas. Kyle Kalinske no. can, can give you these vague poll results that ask stupid questions that are fielded from Democrats all day, but it's bullshit and he knows it. Mm -hmm. Kyle Kalinske's not a smart guy. He's a preacher. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a progressive preacher is what he is. He is there to teach you the gospel of... Saint AOC. But they're not going to win. Mm. And that's that's something that the Democrats are starting to realize. They're not going to win. And everything that they are doing is completely and totally desperate. And we're going to make America great again. Whoa! Um, Daniel Parker donates 10 bucks. says, did you guys see Ben Shapiro's speech at Stanford and the alt-right troll spamming in the chat? We did, actually. Uh, well, I did. Mm -hmm. I, I watched it, oddly enough, while I was waiting for, while I was waiting for Death Stranding to install. <laughs> and I was, I thought it was real. I thought it was really good. I thought that, um, it was, it was Ben at his best in the sense where he basically went out of his way to call out every single thing that they were going to do before they could do it and it basically disarmed them you know notice how none of them got into line to ask questions despite some of them being mm -hmm. there yeah they just call them a cuck from a distance yeah and and yell about free speech a principle they don't even believe in um servant of god asks or says i've been hearing a bunch of christian prophets saying three more in music are coming out for jesus names katie miley and selena your thoughts if it does happen and if you do how others will react i don't believe it I don't either. Um, I, I think that they would be the least likely to do so, but I think that we are going to start seeing more people who who are people of faith that are in music that have kept it uh, close to the chest to feel more mm -hmm. comfortable in talking about it. Because there have been open Christians in music. Alice Cooper is a good example. Dave mm -hmm. Mustaine is a really good example. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that um, now uh, Ted Nugent, um, he converted a few years ago. Because he wasn't up and uh, for a while, um, you know. There's um, that's all. You know. I think that we'll, we'll probably see, see more people who have been religious for a long time start to become more religious or start start realizing that it's a good thing to have in life. Yeah, you know? just be open about it. You know. Oh, I forgot. Tom Araya from Slayer is a devout Christian mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. which is ironic. But um, but yeah. Yeah, head, that's right. 
Let's see here. Um, thoughts on Medicare's um, Finder stream. I thought Medicare deleted his everything. And now he's doing he does, like Billy the anti bully or something like that. He does he does streams on occasion. I didn't watch this one. I didn't get to it on time. Um Apparently this one had like a bunch of super chats that he's not able to get because his account his uh AdSense account was suspended or banned or revoked or something because of the videos that he had on his channel. But he doesn't have any videos on his channel because he fucking deleted them all. Yeah. So they're basically holding all that money well, yeah, holding it hostage more or less. Hmm. Which is it's it's fucking it's fucking bullshit. Like Medicare is kind of like eh for me now, you know, but at the same time if if he got the fucking super chats, he's he's earned that money. Like fucking give it to him. Yeah. Pay, pay what you owe, Susan. Pay what you fucking owe. What else we got? Um, thoughts um, on No Nut November pissing off wolf culture. <laughs> That's funny to me. Um, I think that the the weirdest thing about it is that the progressives can't even be consistent on sex. No, because they will not basically make an a, a idea of which is the better feminism, you know, s sex positive or sex negative. <sighs> so, no, I think it's yeah. funny. And yeah, it's it's not an easy thing to do, to say the least, but one thing that I am happy about in our culture is we're having more people come out against pornography. Now, I do not I do not support a pornography ban. Because, again, you start banning things, you make a black market for them. I want them to be starved yeah. out in the free market. Where people just stop watching. Start having fulfilling relationships again. So, tangentially related, but... Gab going all in against porn, saying that it doesn't count as, as free speech and should be, it should be banned Dude, in the Gab, United States. Gab or, what Gab the fuck a bunch happened? Of, they 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 went all in with the alt right. They're fucking a joke, and nobody what cares. What happened to Torba, they, man? I yeah, am like they, they are flat out fucking like they are the new they, like, and that's the funny thing about this. Like, by trying to attach themselves to Christianity, they have become the new Westboro, and yeah, they have the exact they, same amount of credibility. I am so disappointed in, in Torba, man. I am so disappointed. The instant that he started talking about the JQ and all this other shit, I knew the, the yeah. direction he was going. It was gonna, he was going to fall flat on his fucking face. Yeah, they are. The Supreme they are Court the, disagrees. Yeah, I, I made exactly. a huge fucking post about that. Yeah, they are a bunch of Puritan pricks. Yeah. Remember, we don't do theocracies here. No. JQ was written by Karl Marx. Yes, That's right. Karl exactly. Marx did write that. Mm -hmm. Man, I, I I hate Puritanism. I really do. Yeah. Like it it really is, and I'm very anti-porn. I don't think you should watch it. It's not good for you. But we ban it. We create a black market. Things get worse. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I would rather. Just again, see the market starve itself out. Yeah. Um, this is an interesting one. Uh, Melee Brawler asks, "What are your guys' thoughts on the possibility of Donald Trump Jr. running for president in 2024?" Be interesting. He's more conservative I, than his dad is. I don't think. I don't think I would like it. I think what's I think what was so good about Hillary losing was the fact that it was a rejection of, of political dynasties. dynasties. That's a yeah. fair point. Yeah, I think I think putting Trump Jr. in there, uh, especially right after, uh, assuming Trump wins in 2020, I I don't I don't think I'd go for it. To be honest. Yeah, I don't really have a a, a positive or negative there. Um, Eclectic 1995 says, which country do you believe is the most important ally to the U.S.? Uh, important in which way? Yeah. Trade ally, military ally. 
you know, because like there's there's a ton of them. Yeah, overall, yeah. I'm really not sure. Like I I would say, in in a lot of ways, England is one of our most important. Um, yeah, we're the UK. Yeah. Most important trade ally, China. Sadly. China, absolutely. Yeah. Um, because we we're in such a symbiotic relationship with China, if if something fucking happened, and that's why the, the whole trade war thing has freaked people out so much, because they know if if something really bad fucking happens with one of us, world pretty much world economy goes kaput. Yeah. By I mean, the way, we, we have another Fortune, fucking global recession. Yeah. According to Fortune, um, the other two biggest trade partners of ours are Mexico and um, Canada. So, yeah, behind China, it's those two. Cut the cord with the Chinese. Yeah. It wore it so easy. Mm hmm. Wore it so easy. Why are people saying, for fuck's sake, Paul Joseph Watson? Did he boomer it up? He did boomer it up. People are referencing that Paul Joseph Watson's gone full boomer on Twitter. Have you seen this? Puritan boomer? He's oh, full God. on, full pu- fucking Puritan now. Like, I, I, I think I mentioned this, but <laughs> he, like, posted this video of this chick with a very big butt. Um, man- managing to a- to fill a-, a beer glass with just her hind end, like by holding her like glass between her cheeks. I thought it was hilarious, and it's like, dude, and like, he's it- raising hell about it. Like immediately, he starts getting memed on by everybody because he deserves it. It's like, this dude, you don't this have to watch. 90s- this is a nineteen nineties Republican Party people. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's like. This is what we do with our freedom. Yes, that is what people choose to do with their freedom. Yeah, other people, and it's fucking funny. Yeah, other people choose to do other things with their freedom that are also wholesome, and you don't have to engage with the stuff that's negative, you fucking limey dipshit. Like, it, it, it's, it's ridiculous to me. Paul Joseph Watson was also saying, don't dress on Halloween because it's a children's holiday. Yeah, Matt Walsh said the same thing, too, and it was so, super fucking silly. No no fucking fun allowed. Okay, fine. Fuck you, sir. Yeah. It's like, Fuck you. You are, now, again, the, you are not, now the no not, fun allowed robot. Congratulations, you asshole. This is not 1990s American conservatism, you stupid fuck. Yeah. Jesus Christ. You know. Congratulations on siding with Jack Thompson, you censorious assholes. Holy shit. Pharisee Walsh. Yeah. Oh, my God. And now we got Pharisee PJW, too. (sighs) Remove Boomer? Hashtag remove Boomer. (laughs) We have a song for that. with destroying like half the big terrorist organizations in the world we couldn't play remove cabal <laughs> come on anyway shout out to all of our serbian fans <laughs> you know, i actually got a really uh really cool email from a serbian fan ago thanking me for for talking about like the stuff with like terrorists and um the left like um down like downplaying it so serbian people are awesome i think Uh, i'm one of those weirdos like some of the coolest people like and most hilarious people i've met are like serbian people and um armenians armenians are crazy and i love them (laughs) like they're great so Anyway, we have reached the end of the time. So, for those of you who have a question for the overflow, I know we, we I think we answered most of the questions that we got. Yeah, most um, of them, yeah. Yep, go ahead and um, put them in the uh, 
in the chat right now, and our mods will get them. Brainbox, yep. Hardboiled, uh, I'll let you two decide who uh, wants to snatch them up. But um, Yeah, somebody. Somebody pick them up. Yep, but if you have a question for the overflow, we will be doing it this week for sure. We will both be here, so no worries there. And stick around. Um, once again, if you haven't already, please hit the like button on the screen <coughs> so that it'll help, that our, uh, help in our analytics. Um, for those of you who are watching the replay, please do not forget to comment on it. Let us know what your favorite part of the podcast is. Let us know things we could do better, so on and so forth, and we will definitely take that under advisement. Also, thank you to Servant of God and Daniel Parker for donating money to us. We, that, that means a lot to us, honestly. Um, yeah. Well, anything, any final words on this one, Hatman, before we go get ready for entertainment? Um, I got nothing. Fair enough. Well, I'll just say stick around. Um, we'll be talking about the Outer Worlds. Uh, we'll be talking about the um, Terminator Dark Fate. Hatman actually went and saw it. Um, and then we'll be talking about the death of that franchise and a little bit more. So, to close this one out, my name is Micah Curtis. I'm Alex Baldwin, the one and only Hatman. We'll see you guys very soon. Dave's full. Dave's full.